Hello everyone, as you've been asking for, Lilia is here with the heroes, pairings, talents, everything you're going to need to know, Bow the Fire Mage, the PvP low spender of choice, so stay tuned with me, Mr. Sneaky, for everything you're going to need to know. Hello everyone, so yes, we are going over Lilia today, the low spender choice and obviously one of the number one picks for PvP and we'll go over all the skills and reasonings why later on the video. But for everything you're going to need to know with Lilia, the talent tree, skills, pairings and artifacts, you've come to the right place. And obviously at the end, I'm going to tell you if she's worth investing to, but you can already tell from the intro of Lilia, she is very, very investable into. So with all that further nonsense out of the way, let's go into the talent trees, uh, the skills and the pairings for Lilia, right? So Lilia is an, a phenomenal hero. She's really good in PvP and the reasoning is because of her skill set. So her skill set and her skill one is a 1200 damage nuke that also has a chance to apply a scorch effect to the target which is really cool so you do 1200 damage and then you have a 50 percent chance and you might get this 200 damage factor that hits them every second for five seconds so that's an extra 1000 damage over time that they are going to be taking from this skill the second skill is really good for anyone who needs an early game mage. She's great for peacekeeping, meaning you can level up really, really fast off every single season reset. And that's why she's a really good investment as well for a mage. And then when you look at her third and fourth skills, her third skill gives you a bunch of stats that you want. A massive amount, even at 5111, you're going to gain 10% attack bonus and 4% magic unit HP, which is so good. And obviously, if you get a almost lucky like I have right now you will could get that 20% attack bonus and that 10% um, health bonus but now this is where we start getting into the powerhousing of Lilia so her fourth skill says when she launches a normal attack that she has a 15% chance 15% chance to scorch up to two surrounded enemy legions so within her auto attacks now, she is able to gain these AoE effects. And you've got to think these AoE Scorch triggers are dealing over 1,000 damage to nearby enemies. So even at 5111, a 10% chance to keep hitting AoE for free in the open field is unmatched. And that's why she's one of the most favoured picks for the open field. So when you go to Awakener and you do spend that, all that good good and you spend your hard earned cash and you swipe your card, we are able to get that Awakening. And the Awakening now changes it so her skill now hits up to three targets, which is insane. So it goes from a single target skill to a single target plus two nearby legions that can all get hit by this effect. So as you can see, she has a ton of nuclear damage. She's all about damage, 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 AOE, and as much she can pump out. And that's why, in, as I'm going to say now, she's a really good investment. So if you're wondering how to obtain Lilia, obviously you go to the VIP center. The VIP center, when you gain your VIP, you're going to be able to unlock exclusive heroes. And when we go all the way to VIP 1, you can get 10 heads, which unlock her, which is nice. Um, this is only like 9 cents. When you get the first, second bundle, this is another 10 heads. And this last bundle is 15. And this next bundle is 15. And this is all you're going to need to start having her at 5111. And this is a really great start. And it's only, I think, about 10 bucks in total to get. And with 10 bucks or 10 pounds, you know, depending on your currency, it's always going to be one of the best investments you can make for early game heroes. And when we go into now Lilia's pairings, you're going to understand why. So when you start off even as a free player player or most spenders, you're going to start with Waldea. And Waldea is an excellent choice with her. She gives another bit of AoE damage to the march. More importantly, you get more attack and health, which is more important on the open field. And finally, which is really great by Waldea, is you get that 15% extra hero skill damage. So now Lilia is going to hit even harder. She's going to hit like a truck. 
So you're going to get even more kills and more merits. So you can spend it in the merit store for those extra upgrades and resources that you're going to be needing as a player, right? So another obvious choice and for me the number one pairing currently in the game with Lilia is Valen and Valen is almost Waldir 2.0 so he has the same effect on his skill one which is an amazing 1200 damage now a skill factor with the 20 percent but which makes him even more stronger is he has the 15 percent hero skill bonus that Waldir offers but Compared to Waldir, you also gain a 10% skill crit bonus and a 15% defense bonus. And when you factor this in with the last skill, the last skill gives you a 20% and even at 5111, you get a 10% magic defense reduction on that target allowing you to hit them even harder as a march so obviously when you do expertise him this skill is going to be okay it's not going to work really well with lilia but these first four skills with lilia is an amazing combo to run however there is one more pairing that a lot of players in season three of super server one including myself have experimented a lot with and we've seen amazing results because of one of the talent sheets that we'll be going over later on and that is Atheus. Atheus is actually an amazing pairing with Lilia and the reason is because he does give Lilia some nice single target burst so she can kill targets really quickly now but more importantly, he gives her extra rage generation. And because she give, he gives her extra rage generation, it allows you to pump off those skills, scorching more and more enemies and then applying that insane debuff onto enemies. And then when we go to his last two skills, you do gain this amazing 10% health bonus and you also gain this 20% and 10% damage reduction. If you use only Celestials in your march, you will also gain a 15% healing buff. So remember that if you have League of Order, you can run a full Celestial units with Lilia Atheus and gain this buff. And finally, when you do awaken him, having that extra bit of healing on top of your march means your Lilia is able to actually sustain on the battlefield enough without giving too many extra kills to the enemy because obviously you don't want to heal too much because by healing too much you're going to obviously generate more merits for the enemy. So you want to just heal enough so you can sustain certain fights and certain bursts and sustain your march so you can able to keep you know fighting long enough for for a decent amount of time basically and we've got a lot of combat videos coming up so don't worry we're going to talk about combat more so that is the Lilia pairings and skills and now let's go over her artifacts as you can see I already have Phoenix Eye this is one of the first artifacts that came in the game and it is an excellent choice for her still it gives you a massive 4000 damage factor onto 5 targets but even at level 1 it's a 2k damage factor on 4 targets which is insane when it comes to PvP. If we go to replace it now another really good choice that you can run on your mage match is the magic bomb. Magic Bomb allows you to, again, it's almost the cheap budget version of Phoenix Eye. It does a massive amount of damage, 1800, and it is hitting three targets. It's a really cool effect that you can put on the march. If you don't have that or you have in something else in your arsenal, you can also run something like the Breath of Yorgantis. This is a really powerful ability. It allows you to give your march the effect to reduce the enemy's defense even further and it does a little bit of damage that you can see on screen so when you do hit that mass amount of aoe you know with your lilia you're going to do even more damage because their defenses are lowered and finally another choice which is probably now the number one choice for lilia is the infernal flame it allows her auto attacks on top of what she currently has to have even more scorch triggers as well as giving a 15% magic attack buff and a nice AoE damage skill that obviously scales the higher level you get it. 
So it's a really powerful effect. You can also run this, mar this artifact on someone else, like say your Valen and Waldea match, and it allows them to scorch enemies, but allows Lilia to scorch multiple enemies now because they're already scorched, right? So there's a little bit of synergy there for you guys when, with, when it comes to artifacts pairings and combo pairings there. So now let's go over the hardest bit, which everyone kind of loves, is the talent pages. We've got three to go over and they're really exciting in each of them. So when we come to the talent builds right now, it's really simple and it's a really effective build and it's so easy to follow, you're gonna love it. To PvP, the one thing you really want to do with Lilia is always generate rage. She's a really powerful glass cannon. And that, what that word means is she's really all about dealing as much damage as she can before she dies. And it's a really powerful thing you can have on a hero, similar to someone like Khan, if you want to imagine, like a super damaging march. She does the same, but instead of being at melee range she can do it from range and that's what makes her stand out so much more compared to the other heroes so when we look at her talents the foundational talents again guys are always going to be the same foundational talents these are the best talents you can take no matter what scenario you are in because you always gain the attack that you want March speed is the most important thing you're going to need for raiding, so you can dodge mechanics, as well as in PvP. You need March speed in PvP, so you can escape targets that are trying to slow you. Obviously, you can reposition yourself and chase down targets as well. So March speed is really important, and it is actually a really key stat when it comes to it. Obviously, we go for health. We always want health. Health is the most key stat for your match. So the foundational talent for anyone is always the same. The only exception is your gathering commanders. You can imagine you would pick the gathering speed instead. But now let's go into her talent tree. And the one that stands out the most is the skill tree. The skill tree for mages is the best tree in the game game and the reason is it does everything the mage wants to do in a march it provides you with a load of regeneration it provides you with a load of skill damage as well as mitigation so when we look at the skill tree right now we have five points in the first three talents and these all give you attack skill damage as well as that rage generation so far as we've not really done any experimenting there's not been a rage cap i'm going to be messaging the support just to double check that information and i'll be posting it on my community area on the page so if you're looking for the rage update we will find out for you so don't worry but the really cool, powerful thing about this is now when you look at Spirit of Rage. Every single time you cast your Rage skill now, you're going to gain 20 additional Rage flat, which is very powerful. Again, when you're looking at someone like an Atheist pairing, that also gives you 30 Rage with a 30% chance trigger. And now you also have that 50 Rage every time you potentially launch that normal attack, right? You have a 10% chance you just gain 50 Rage. So it's a very great Rage engine with just these talents you don't really need much more rage it's just enough for the march to pump out enough without going overboard with the rage element right and now when we look at the top section this is what makes the skill tree the number one tree and that is because of the health mitigation you mitigate all those whales all the players you're against as health by two percent and two percent might not sound like a lot but in this game health is the hardest stat to obtain so if you're able to cut that stat down even by a little margin like two percent you're gonna be dealing more damage and you're going to be able to kill that unit a lot quicker when you focus and get down. And when you look at this skill combination now, compared to a lot of talent trees, you'll notice these talents have no line, right? And the line here is a signification. So when you look at Rage and Tide before you put any points into it, so if we look for an example over here, it says you must put five points into focus first, which requires you to put five points here. 
So this is a combination talent. You must compil, complete the first one to unlock the second one in the usage. And it's a really powerful effect and, and the reasoning why it is because they do really great synergy. So if you look at focus, when you launch a normal attack, you have that 10% chance to have your skill hero crit rate increased by 10% insane to have because again crit rate means in general you're dealing between 150% to 250% more damage we haven't checked exactly the number yet we're trying to figure out how to word and um, to figure uh, the difference in the damage number still or we're going to ask again support so we're going to get update on this number increase but more importantly when you look at rage and tide you get 15% skill crit damage which is insane you get a massive payoff for hitting these big burst windows with your talents and to finish off for me i like consistency so the way you can be the most consistent in your march is actually running first for blood whenever you cast your raid skill which you're always going to be doing you're going to be launching an additional hero skill damage factor of 60 which actually scales up with your damage factor to a considerable amount so you're actually dealing more consistent bursts on a damage you know return when you look at the other skill caged animal this skill is really 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 good if you're able to maintain battle so if you're in a very very long fight it's really good and a really good scenario for this skill actually is the behemoths so when we look at my pve raid skill you're gonna see it's pretty much the exact same in Instead of generating as much rage, because we don't really need to generate as much rage in raids, we're trying to focus on as much damage instead. And we have that cage animal to m always give us that 8% damage buff in the fight. This is going to stack up really fast again because of the rage generation we already have. As you can see, we don't need the mitigation anymore, so we opt in to have n less normal attack damage but 8% more skill damage, so your burst windows are even harder. We still went 5 and 5, but in this tree, because it's all raiding, my suggestion for you guys is to do the following. You will put 5 points into the following tree here, so whenever you gain a buff effect from any of your ally mages around you that give you health on an allied basis all the time or anytime you gain rage or anytime you're gaining skill synergy which you always do with a mage you're gonna gain even more damage dealt and that is really important on the raid and finally you'd put your last five points here in unquenchable will and what this leaves you with is six points and with six points it's nice and easy you can choose out of the last two so with the last two skill trees, you can actually opt to have five points in the magic HP to give yourself that extra little bit of rage generation that you want in your march. Or if you feel like you generate enough rage so far, you can put your last five points in the attack part and then one point in your overall speed just to give yourself in the raid against, for example, the necro giant, the ability to dodge all those mechanics and phases and help your team survive right so it's a really cool tree to have and this is especially again for raids only guys remember if you're going to kill that pesky giant bear hydra thunder rock you name it this is the tree you want to be running for it so finally we're going to go over the last tree and the last tree is a really cool tree in my opinion that will get some usage later down the road maybe when players want a little bit more fun with lilia and this is going down the magic tree first so when you max out the magic tree as shown it's a really easy talent tree to follow you go straight down the middle to get health rage generation and skill damage which is the three top tier um skills or talents that you want in pvp so you get the free best stats in pvp off the rip with magic and then you get honestly a choice so as a player with the magic tree you get the choice of either magic maelstrom which allows lilia to always deal consistent damage which means every time now you go to cast your raid score just before you cast it as you read here you always mitigate the enemy's defense by 10%, meaning you hit even harder. You get that big 
bit of chunk of damage in extra just before you fire off which is really effective for consistency but if you're like me and you want a little bit more fun and you want a little bit more rng energy boost is really powerful it does give you almost a 10 percent chance here it's only eight percent so that's why i'm saying almost 10 percent to allow your skill one to fire on an additional target so now just think if you have an expertise lilia that hits three marches well now you can hit an additional target and that skill can hit another two targets so in theory you can hit up to six units so that is a really impressive amount of units and aoe coverage you can gain with lilia and gets you actually a surprising amount of merits in the open field so when you're finishing off the tree I would advise going to take less skill damage for the survivability and the combination to gain your extra magic defense break whenever you take skill damage which is really powerful so when you're in the open field and you're fighting someone and they start retaliating back and they fire that skill one you're able to hit them with a magic defense break and then when you hit them you're gonna hit them even harder again with the match it's a really powerful effect that's why i said you can pair it up with magical maelstrom so you get almost a 15 percent defense break here so it's a really good way to consistently deal damage and in the open field as you guys know if you've not checked out the cp or stamina videos what you want to be doing is always always try to keep your match out as long as possible and return it when it's in the red as soon as it hits the red you send it home refresh those troops and go out and because you're doing that when you're in that yellow to red area when you're getting in the you know below 50 to 20 percent zone you're going to be dealing 7.5 percent more skill damage so it is going to benefit you and those other players that are equally at 50 percent are going to feel the difference in damage when you have such a big spike when you hit 50 percent also elemental boost for me is a really powerful effect for pvp that's why i have gone for it it allows you to gain 15 percent health stats on your march which is insane for pvp it's going to allow you to survive as long as possible but if you are greedy i don't blame you picking ecoclasm it does give you a load of bit of extra damage it's up to you which one you pick but for me i prefer to survive longer so i can get more merits in the open field with that 10 stamina that i'm going to be using for the march so that is all the talents i'm going to do a quick summary this is the talent tree so far that i can unlock for the raids as i said you want to put five points here afterwards when you complete your first 43 five points here and then as i'm going to do five points here and one point here to get that extra bit of rage generation when you're going to go for the pvp rage engine build which is the best current build for lilia it is this tree on screen right now and then you finish going down five five and one on the magic maelstrom and then when you're looking at the pvp tree again we've just gone over it but when you're finishing off the last part you will do five points in overall attack five points in intimidation five points in high spirits and it's up to you if you want extra rage generation it is very fine to go for spirit of rage in this build but if you feel like you've got enough rage generation because you've got high spirits here and foresight here you're going to be able to take boiling blood giving you that extra bit of damage on your deputy and then i would definitely finish out here giving yourself that extra bit of mitigation for the march so that is it guys that is lilia that is all the skills pairings artifacts talents and my basically view on her right so if you're looking for an investment choice she's really good remember 10 bucks most likely will get you that 5111 lilia if you keep investing into her, you're hoping to try and get her at 5, 3, 5, and 5, or even 5, 2, 5, 5, if possible, because the last bundle, so the last 89.99 bundle, the big boy one, will give you enough sculptures to expertise with the last three skills. So just remember that, right? So if you're looking for Lilia, is she worth investing? She is. She's a phenomenal hero. She can grant you a load of stats. She'll generate you a load of kills, as you can see here. She also does a load of Darklings for you. So she is amazing to use. I've done 280 so far, as you can see. So that's where my skill set is for her. 
but she is great. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Smash the like, comment, and subscribe for more daily commander videos as well as event guides and open field commentaries with me, Mr. Sneaker. And if you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments. You know, I need to know what you guys want. And if you suggest anything, I will be uploading it. So until next time, sis, stay safe, stay sneaky, and peace out, guys.